Welcome to the 24th annual Miami Jewish Film Festival. We are delighted that you have attended and are attending one of the world's largest and oldest Jewish cultural arts events. We want to thank you to our members, our sponsors, community partners, volunteers, all of you film lovers out there, and especially our presenting sponsors. The Center for the Advancement of Jewish Education, that's SAGE, and the Greater Miami Jewish Federation for their continued support throughout all these years. My name is Joy Chandler, and I'm the Director of Early Childhood and Congregational Education at SAGE. Um, it is a privilege and an honor to be speaking today to the co-producers, uh, Lara and Chesta, Chestin Meisel of the movie, Or. And this is a Florida premiere. And um, I'm, I'm so thrilled if you're watching this interview, then I'm sure you've watched it and you, you're very moved. So it's a pleasure to welcome you both to, um, to Miami virtually. Thank you so much for being here. And um, Lara is also the director of the film. She is also the protagonist in the film. We are watching her journey. Um, thank you for sharing that with us in such a personal, intimate, real, real way. Um, so I wanna ask you about the title of the film. The mm -hmm. title is called Or, which I know means light, and it's so apropos to this movie. You are shedding light on who your mother was. You're understanding the light of who she was and you're uncovering her, spoke, her unspoken narrative and you're bringing that to the light. So I wanna ask you about the title. Did you know from the beginning that this was gonna be the title of your story? How did that happen? That's a great question. Um, we went back and forth on different titles. I think that from the beginning, we were, we, we had or in mind. And the, the reason for that was I wanted to share my mom's light. I really wanted to share her light. Her light is something that is, out, your light is something that really outlives you. That's the light of your soul. And so I, felt that it was an appropriate name for the film because it was the true expression of what her, of what her story was. It was that this film was getting vessels to her light. Yeah. Um, and I also had a rabbi involved, Rev Pinson, and this whole um, journey was about uncovering my mom's or It was about uncovering her light. Um, and we always came back to or we always came back to or and even still it feels most authentic because it really is an expression of her light mm -hmm. um you want to anything about that not, yeah, yeah. I, I, can i add one thing sure please to me like i think when we finally settled on that name what felt really particularly resonant was the only time we use the word or in the entire film is when when ruff pinson is explaining mm -hmm. um, this tragic death. And he says, it really is a matter of perspective. If you're looking from the vessel, which is the body, right. it's traumatic. But if you're looking from the light, which is the soul, it's a release. And I think that so much about this film is about transforming one's understanding and looking at things from a more spiritual perspective, as opposed to from the perspective of the loss, but rather from the perspective of the light. Uh, of the right. light. And, I, and I think yeah. that that's, to me, I felt that that really is the essence and the soul of the film. Yes, yes, I, I understand that. And also the fact of who your mother was, 
I love, Laura, the way you said you talked to so many people and you did not find one person who could say anything dark about your mother. Your yeah. mother was, she embodied light. She embodied positivity, um, which is so wonderful. I thought, oh, what would have happened if you had discovered something different? How yeah, would that have been? I think that that's a great question. Um, I think that I had reason to believe that there was reason for me to find a light, which is part of, for sure, a big part of what I went on my journey. But I have to say, I think that whatever it is that you find, you can find the light. You know, I think it has more to do with, is it from the perspective of the light or the perspective of the, uh, of the vessel? And, you know, whatever it is, like why also, you know, I was afraid to, I was afraid to even open up the story because of the things I had heard were so traumatic. So, you know, the same thing can be thought of in a completely different way from a different perspective. So I was very fortunate to find out that my that this was a story that I could so deeply relate to. That being said, I think that opening up any questions you have about who you are is important. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think whatever that story is matters. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very, you know, even if it's a dark story, well, then what? You know, you know, there's something about knowing that allows you to find the light in it. Yes, yes. And that's a choice. It's a frame of mind. It's, um, it's, act, it's an act of um, deliverance. It's, you're <laughs> deliberating and you know exactly why you're choosing light. It's really about coming to consciousness about who we are, you know, about our, about who we are and what our, kind of our soul's mission is here. So, you know, for me, that was, it really has been about discovering my mom 36 years after not knowing anything, you know, that, uh, that, that could have gone in many directions, but I think coming to consciousness about that, whatever the story is, is, is a really beautiful thing. Yes. Yes. There's a beautiful point in, in your narrative where you are seeing your mother at her brother's bar mitzvah celebration. Mm -hmm. And you say, wow, I, I stand like my mother. Yeah. And <laughs> now at my age, I say, oh my God, I'm beginning to look like my mother. And it's like, not such a great thing. But when you said that, it was so um, beautiful, so honest and visceral. It's about your body. It's about how you're standing. It's physical. Yeah. And it was so powerful. Yeah, I'm happy that you noticed that. That is something that I've gotten comments on about the film is that people, I think, take for granted a sense of belonging or a sense of identity and just knowing that there is somebody in this world who moves like you, who talks like you, that you see yourself in. Oh, this is where I come from. And I think when I saw that, it was just, like you said, so visceral. There is something about identity and belonging. We're all looking for a sense of identity and belonging. And when you have it, when you see it, it's it's, it's very powerful. Yes, yes, yes. It goes and, beyond genetics. And you come to consciousness, that, you know, and then it's also, it's a knowing. I come to consciousness by seeing that. I can come to consciousness that I come from this woman. Yes. It's, it, you know, this is somebody who I am, who, who I take after. It's very cool. It's yes. really, it, it really, uh, it's, it, it's been very powerful. 
I'm giving you, continuity to my life, I guess I should say. Yes. So um, I think you said that you were 36 when you went on this journey. Yeah. Um, what do you think was right about that time, not doing it in your 20s or yeah maybe even in your teens what do you think made this the right time um i first of all i had kids so i had i had four kids i had reason that this really needed to be uncovered there was reason for me to go i needed my family needed me to be really strong and really directed and very intentional and very um what's the word i'm looking for whole my family needed to yes. see me whole it was important um so i think i had the motivation to really uncover everything but i think more than that at that point i had been married for 12 years and i had a foundation that i could go on this journey like i don't want to I, I don't want to minimize that at all because in truth you know, I opened up, I, I opened up, I, I opened up loss. I, I opened up a void that could, that, 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 you, that, that took love <laughs> to get through. Mm -hmm. And I would have only gone there because I knew, I remember when I was making the film, I actually said to the camera guy, I said, the only reason I can do this is because I know my husband will put me back together. Yeah, I, knew, I, I really like I, I, I don't want to minimize that it really gave me the courage like it gave me the courage that I knew whatever it is I uncovered if it was the good the bad the ugly whatever it is I'm still loved <laughs> you know we will get through this yeah. and you know and I and I have support in uh, I have support. I really have the support to go on this journey so I don't want to minimize that at all it was really I think one of the biggest reasons I could go on this journey at this point was the foundation of our marriage. Wow. Um, so Justin, I wanted to add one thing, and that was just to say, there was also the reality of her, her grandmother was still alive at the time and wow. the opportunity to go, to go see people who are getting older and to go and do it. It was a perishable opportunity. Yes. So, and it, I think there was a readiness. There was a readiness, but in truth, the trigger of the whole thing was a really good friend of mine that lost her mom suddenly, oh. suddenly mom to colon cancer. And her, she has a son who was best friends with my son. And he really looked to me for guidance through the whole thing. And, um, and watching my friend be so close to her mom going through cancer sitting shiva with her for her mom it really opened up all of these questions i i needed to know yes yes yeah wow okay that that was going to be another question i'm so glad that you that you mentioned that and justin i want to ask you um what was it about <laughs> lara that you saw 12 years ago um the end 17 we've been married oh, 17 years. Oh, okay so did you see in her the woman who she is now with the strength and the courage um to do this well i think when you're young and you're getting married you see if you're tuned in you see perhaps the qualities in a person that when given the right nurturing and, 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 you know, sort of it's the seed that can grow into something. And I think she might've seen a seed in me and I saw a seed in her. <laughs> oh, wow. Exactly the way I was supposed to, but, but she did a great job. She's like a strong oak tree now. So, um, but you know, like, I think we were, we were young and we were, you know, but I think that we had what we, what I saw in her was that was essential and, and i think what we saw in each other was there was a willingness to really do the work to grow to be honest about growth and just deal with things in a really honest way even if it was difficult or painful but like to just deal with things and to be real about things to, give and you, to grow that's yeah. important 
Yeah. We both shared that quality. But to give you an idea of where I was when we got married, he couldn't even talk about my mom. If oh, he wow. mentioned my mom, it would be like, what are you talking about? I'm fine. I didn't have a mom. I'm fine. There's nothing to talk about. Like, I, it was a locked door. Right. So this was not like, wow. this was not like, oh, but he, he used to say to me at some point, maybe, I don't know, five, six years ago, before I went on this journey, he used to say to me, losing my mom is my superpower. Oh, he really, wow. he always used to say that to me. And I, I was kind of like, thanks, sweetie. I appreciate that. I don't know what that means, but thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> now she knows what it means, I, I think. But it's uh -huh. true. You he, knew Cheston before <laughs> Lara before yeah. and when I first found out about my mom the very first opening I had before any of this before any of this film we had gone to Vegas for his birthday and we were getting on the plane on the way back and he said oh yeah you're gonna make a movie about your mom I see it right now like there's like a camera crew and blah 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 and I was like I said to him I said Chess, that's very invasive like I can't even like how how do you think I'm just gonna show up with a camera crew and he goes yeah I don't know we'll see and maybe like two years later, there I was making a film. Wow. Um, wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I get a sense that both of you are creative beings. Yeah. Um, you both play guitar, right? Music is a part of your life. Um, did you have any connection to films? And did you ever have an aspiration to actually make a film? So, yeah, you know, it's just funny because we both once upon a time had aspirations and then we both moved on from those aspirations. <laughs> film, And then I was like, I'm never making another film. And now I'm, I have a feature in post-production that I've made over the last. So, so yes, yeah. he's, just, um, he just, post, so. He's, he's just finishing a film right now, his own film right now. Oh uh, my gosh, mazel tov. <laughs> Maybe you'll do mine one day. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's great actually it's a great oh. little up here. It's a, yeah it's a very oh different not a doc it's it's different it's not for today but it's yeah. a totally different thing but yes i think that we both had you know laura you would shoot laura went to gallatin she at one point in time you know right. i had moved to la actually at acting i got a, oh, I wow. moved her acting and then i got married and decided acting wasn't for me and then i ended up making this documentary which actually really um, gave me, it, it kind of like fulfilled my acting. I, I feel totally expressed. Mm, and yeah. I want to actually give my husband credit for because all of the, um, it was, a, it was a, a conversation. How much of me do I put in the film, right? It's about my mom and we were really keeping it focused on my mom. Um, but it was very important to him that the video diary was in there. So I actually have to give him a lot of credit for keeping it as authentic as it was. Yes, I think that that's the beauty of the film. At the end of watching it both times, I felt what a tribute you have made to your mom and it will be everlasting and your children will be able to grasp uh, the emotional, um, the family, the familial, the emotional journey that you went on, they will be able to understand who their grandmother was. And I also loved and resonated with your journey to find out who you are, because there are other people who don't know who their birth mother is, their you know, birth father, and there is that sense of longing. Um, I know I've spoken to a lot of people and yeah. they, they have that sense, I wanna know my roots. I wanna know who my parent was. Yeah. So I love that you are in that. This is your story as well as your mom's. Yeah, um, I think a big message for me in the movie is that it really is a film more about finding, it's about finding and more than loss because I do yes. feel like in finding my mom's or and finding her light like I was talking to my brother the other day I feel like I hang out with my mom all the time now like it's uh -huh. 
it's an interesting, it's hard for me to explain, but I really, I get her. She's in my head. Like I know her, I know her. And so there's just, it has really transformed how I, my understanding of loss and, and connection. You know, for me, connection, like the physicality of connection is important. It matters. But in truth, you know, what we are is our soul. That is who we are. And it's the, um, you know, it's we are here to express our soul. And so if I'm finding my mom in me, I found her. It's very real in that way. It seems like you two are both very similar in your senses of spirituality. Um, so Justin, was Lara talking about the soul 17 years ago? Um, or did you grow into this, this spiritual mindset, which I think is also a positive mindset? No, actually, I think the reason we chose each other was because we both we're on a spiritual path with a very sincere willingness to grow through whatever was ahead of us. So I think it is what attracted me to her. Now, she may not have been able to contextualize her mom and certainly her, like hers, you know, she's risen many levels in awareness and consciousness over the many years of, you know, marriage, parenthood and growth, you know, these paths, they go and twist and turn. So obviously, um, her understanding these things is so much you know more real now but the essence of her desire for it and interest in talking about these subjects that's why we're together right yes mm -hmm. yes and so it's it is, it is your gorgeous good looks but i put up with all the spiritual stuff you know just to i you know now i'm found out in front of everybody <laughs> so it's really interesting because that's your mother too. Your aunt, um, Rosalind said, she's the older sister, right? And she said, I was always the, the louder one and the more social and your mom was deeper. Yeah. And um, that was so helpful for me to learn. Like, I mean, it, honestly, like that, that, could, that could bring tears to me just in the sense that you know, going through my life, I always had a, a, a deeper understanding of consciousness because I had to navigate world, a world without my mom. Yeah. So then to meet my mom and see that like she had real depth to her and she was on her own spiritual journey was just so um, life-changing. Absolutely. Um, it's hard to believe that in the midst of this journey that your mother's on, her father is murdered on the mm -hmm. same day that she gets this terrible diagnosis. Um, and your aunt says that they sat Shiva for seven days, um, but your mom was in the hospital. Did they? Did you get a sense of how she was hearing that news? Um, well, I mean, it's, like it says in the film, she never complained. She never had, never said, why me? She never, there was never any of that. Um, I think that, and this is just an intuitive hit of mine. I think my mom felt a strong sense of mission when her father passed away and she was diagnosed. Oh. I think that it probably gave her uh, I don't want to say like a willingness, like a determination to, to live. Um, so, you know, I think that my mom was a deeper soul. And I think that that really, it, 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 it ignited her soul in certain ways, I think. Yes. Yeah. Want to add anything? No, I, I think it makes, you know, in, in, in some strange way, it's almost as if, that hadn't happened, that the miracle and surviving to have two children, all those other things that happened might not have also happened. So sometimes when we look at tragedy, you know, it's hard to look at it at the moment and see it. it, it but when you look, you know, uh, 40 something years, you know, 40 something years later, 
you know, it, it, it just takes a very different perspective. Right. The, I mean, the, the first time I ever saw my mom was that video that I ever saw her alive was that video. And I got that video on my grandfather's 40th yard site, which is the same oh. day diagnosed, the same day he was, the same day he was oh. murdered. And it also happens to be his birthday. It's also March, well, it's March 24th or March, 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 his, 25th, his March but... 25th is his birthday. But it's, there's so much, uh, there's so much uh, providence and mm -hmm. uh, in the in the way right. it's all come about that it just I think it's given order to chaos. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't. For whatever reason, I feel a strong connection to to Laura's grandfather. I don't know why. Is he? Yeah. Um, as a personality, I've always felt some sort of connection with him, and this happened close to my birthday. So you know, once again, it's like says the film. There are no coincidences. So you. Know, Part of one story because you're the fun dad <laughs> i i think dad's my dad was the fun dad too mom was the disciplinarian <laughs> was that an era that era of parenting i don't know but yeah they're both roles i yeah. think we have we, you know we each take some of the fun and some of the discipline you know depending on what's needed right right yeah that's terrific um, I wanted to ask about faith. Um, it's, it's clear that you, uh, you connect in a very soulful way. Um, did Judaism play a part in your life before this journey? Um, and how did the journey, if at all, impact on your Jewish roots? Um, so, okay, I became, I, I was very spiritually inclined and I became, um, I, I, I started, I remember the moment I started to really believe in God. Um, I was in a yoga class, it wasn't like yeshiva. Okay. <laughs> but for me, it was always a very, um, it, to me, for me, my connection to God has always been very individual and spiritual. And I think because I lost my mom, it's a connection I've always relied upon a lot. Um, so I think that my spiritual connection is something that I've always had, although over time in college, it crystallized for me much more when I went to um, after I graduated, I went to yeshiva because at that point I didn't know, am I really part of this whole chosen people? Like I was expected to, you know, marry a Jewish guy and everything, but I, I needed to know, do I, do I believe it? Is it real? If I'm going to base my life around this whole thing, is it really something I believe in? And so I went to Israel when I was 22 and I went to yeshiva. I went there for six months. And it was more so, more than anything, I wanted to know where I stood on Judaism. I wanted to know, is this, uh, is this something I really connect to? Is it tradition? Is it, you know, what is it to me? I needed clarity. And after being there for six months, I had enough clarity to know I'm in. <laughs> you know, I'm in. For me, this is truth. This is my path. Um, I came home and honestly, within six months of coming home, I met my husband. <laughs> wow. Who had been on this journey for a very long time already. Right. right. Um, and yeah. Was Chestin also, were you on this Jewish journey at that time? Very much so. I mean, I, I grew up in a home that was very Jewish and we were involved in like, there were a lot of be involved in the community and things like that, but we weren't, we weren't. We weren't religious. We had some traditions. We weren't religious per se. We weren't orthodox for any stretch of the imagination. And but really, even when I was in high school, um, I was very interested in a spiritual journey. But it sort of, I think, at that age, took on a more universal sort of way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. um, until I guess I got to the point that Judaism, at least, was one of many paths that all had truth. Until I sort of found that this, you know, this this was the path that had what I really needed. And so it was over a period of many years before, you know, but by the time I uh, 
was I would I, after, after college I was in law school I was living in the Upper West Side I was keeping Shabbat and then after law school I went to Yeshiva for a little bit before I moved to LA and that's where we wow. met. Wow. I want to. I actually want to show you something really quickly. <laughs> this is just a sense to, to tell you. Um, oh, that's that's. Yeah. So, I was on this. I was on this Jewish path with my husband, and we were raising these Jewish children, and it was very beautiful. Um, and I, and then at that point, I started to really get into more like the mystical side, and with Pinson, and I got really into his teachings. And that kind of coincided with me getting to know my mom, mm -hmm. um, who then I learned was on a very similar spiritual path to me. Um, and it was really a path of like Hasidus and inner Torah. Mm -hmm. And, um, but something I did get about a year ago, which um, about a year and a half ago. So this is actually a little prayer book that she used to use. And I have her sit there. Um, and some books that she like literally underlined, like books of Hasidus and that kind of thing. Oh. And I say this for Shema every night and I say for Moja Ani in the morning. And I have to, and I daven from her sitter every day. And I, I tell Chesson this all the time. Like when I daven from my mom's sitter, or even like every morning, these are like, like this is like her, like, like you can feel her on here. You know, that it's for me to just, know that this was real to her you know it's not like she went to school and didn't daven like she, she she you know this has her tears on uh, on it um so there's a real sense of like belonging connectivity and identity within Torah, you know like with within my spirituality which is so Awesome, and when I tell you shocking, I didn't grow up like this, I, right? You know, and so this is all very beautiful and special, but even more so when you didn't know you had it. Right, and your mother sort of got it the same way. She didn't grow up davening every day. That's the, um, the Hebrew word for praying every mm -hmm. day. Um, and she wasn't studying Torah, but she, she became attracted to it because it spoke to her. Yes. yes. Right. And she found her place within it. And I think that that's what it does. It helps to connect me to the narrative. Yes, absolutely. So I have two more questions. Mm -hmm. One is, um, well, have you talked to your children and do they, have they expressed what they get from your story from your narrative from watching the film um has it how has it impacted them um so i think in several ways i knew i knew i got the film right when my 13 year old son told me he was proud of me because this was because this was something that would be seen in you know, Theaters and that kind of thing, and it was a vulnerable piece. And thirteen years old is, you know, teenagers are kind of the height of self. Um, so he could see, he could say he was proud of me. So he could see that there was a journey and that there was an overcoming and there was growth, um, which really told me he got it and that um, it took something that would have been sad and made it a, a merit. And so that to me was really meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, my kids don't even know me. They can't even remember me without my mom as part uh -huh. of our life. Like it was almost like they don't even know. They are super aware of where they come from, who they are, what our values are, mm -hmm. who I am, what I stand for. I mean, I don't know, is there anything you wanna? No, no, I mean, I think I think the kids look, especially this last year, where as a family we've spent so much time, you know, together without the distractions of other yeah. things. I think the kids, and you know, hopefully, um, you know, a lot of people have experienced the kids really, you know, developed a closer bond to one another and and a closer bond to us and. Uh, I, I think that, you know, this movie was one step in a process, but I do think it is also 
critically important because the kids also saw her go through making this thing, making it a reality. They saw the courage, they saw what she's made of. And I think that just as Lara learned, you know, what her mom was made of, I think all the people around her, I mean, I think I already knew what she was made of, but I think for those <laughs> who didn't have it revealed yet, they were able to, to see. And, and so it's something for the kids to see not only what their grandmother was made of, but also what their mom's made of. And I think that's really important. I wanna go for it. I wanna say that my kids at this point know, they know that I do and will believe in them until my last breath, period. That's where I come from. Yes, it, it's like your mother did not take her eyes off of you. When and you were born, I, she was holding you, always looking at you. Yeah, I mean, she but she she believed she she believed in life through death. I, you know, I think that no matter what happens in life, when you know what you believe. There's a, there is a peace, there's a sense of peace. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I have one last question and it's about, first of all, the score of in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's actually, I have two questions. So one is something that you wrote. And so the score is an interpretation of something that you did, Laura. Yeah, the score. I had I had started learning guitar, I don't know, maybe a year and a half before I before I started with the film. Um, but yeah, there was a song I actually wrote. I actually wrote for you um, called "Catch Me," and we ended up using the backdrop of it for kind of the it became the connective tissue. Yeah, became yes. The tissue. So, Which, and, yeah, yeah, which is beautiful. Our, was the one who actually performed the score and did it and and, and took it and, and wove it in and and, and adapted it and really yeah. did the rest of the score so beautifully. So it was really, you know, it, it was a very personal um, thing that, you know, with that, just that theme song being able to weave into all the different directions yeah. like that, so. What an inspiration, that, that was really lovely, lovely. And then the music at the end, um, just in your, it's your song and you're right. singing and playing it. That's correct. And I wanna know, did you write this song for the movie? Right. How did this song come oh, about? This song really came to me, I don't know, it just came to me on Purim. Like certain, there are certain, what? Yeah, it, yeah no, so, so basically, you know, I've, I've only been, really so focused on music for almost right like six years or so but at that point it was a few couple few years and um sort of the words came to me on Purim and then like certain parts of it came, and it just kind of came together over time and I just kind of you know usually I, like the song kind of came together for me and I just was playing it and then I uh recorded it with a friend of ours who who you know helped me put it down and then when it came time to do the closing credits it just laura wanted to use that song i was like great fantastic it's in. You know, i really wanted him to be he was such a big part of my journey and it wouldn't have happened without him and i felt like it was incomplete i don't i felt it was complete with the song it was beautiful and i wrote down some of the words um it's time to let the light shine through about this moment in time and um, take your masks off, discover what's inside. So, <laughs> yeah, but that it, we're always wearing masks. Uh, you know, we change them many times a day. And it was so profound. And for me, it really tied so many of these um big concepts together yeah yeah thank you i want to know is there anything else that you'd like to share with our virtual audience very good um yeah i mean i think that 
I, I think that for me, the biggest takeaway is really kind of having a, a different understanding of loss and that yeah. loss, you know, when we lose something physically, we don't have to lose it completely. You know, we don't really have to, we don't have to lose our connection to it. Um, the connection is there. Love does not, love is there. A connection is made. You can't break it. It is an unbreakable bond. Um, and I think what Chesson said, it's not, if he says in the song, it's not about the narrative. What, have, what matters most is the lens. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's true. It's really true. Um, yes. So anyway, yes. I hope that, that people take the light from my story oh. and the story. And um, really, it is, it, it is a story of light. Yes, yes. It is a story of light, clarity, coming out of shadows, and courage your mom's and yours. And thank you for being so generously sharing it with all of us. Um, yeah, it's thank really, really beautiful. Thank you for taking the time, you know, because when you put out something into the world, you, you know, you do it so that hopefully people can be touched by it. So thank you for being willing oh. to be. Touched. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. It, 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 it's so easy to be touched by, by each frame. So thank you so much. And um, I want to thank everybody for joining us, our virtual audience. We've just had a wonderful, wonderful conversation with Lara and Chestin Meisel. They are the co-producers of the film Or, and Lara is the director of the amazing, beautiful film. So again, I want to thank all of our sponsors, members, community partners, and volunteers and all of the film lovers, you are the engine that makes this film festival so special. I wanna thank our uh, very close sponsors, SAGE, the Center for the Advancement of Jewish Ed and the Greater Miami Jewish Federation for all of the, their years of support. And um, have a wonderful time enjoying all the films in the festival learn and be touched. I think that's what we're here to do. And that's the power of the arts to be touched in, in such a beautiful, personal and profound way. So thank you again, Lara and Chestin and to our entire audience. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you both for watching my film, for watching our oh, film. A pleasure. <laughs>